All right. So I'm going to start out with my vine charcoal, and I'm going to start out with that center line. And again, I need to draw relatively small so I can keep, have enough room for all of these. And this is something to notice. Um, right now I'm realizing that this oval is not the same as this one. It's much too skinny. There's a lot more room going on here, so I'm going to fix it. You need to recognize that, you know, every curve isn't identical. And you're trying to make it, you know, make sure you adjust and go, is that really the same curve that I see in the drawing or not? So these ovals are a lot thicker than the one I did on the drawing through, and that's okay. And I'm going to give myself a little help here to get in that shadow. I think it's a little wider. Okay, so now, now I'm done with that vine chuckle. I don't need it anymore. So I, when I'm drawing these, I just start it the same way as I do my value skills. And I look for the really, really bright white areas and the really dark areas, and then I mix all the grays in between. Uh, and this is the point where things are going to get messy before they get good. Poor Zach is going to hear me say that so much. Zach's my TA in third hour, so... He gets to hear these things a lot. But I'm telling you, these drawings get so, so messy and blurry, and it gets really frustrating. It's really easy to give up when you're doing these drawings because you want them to be crisp and clear, and they're just not. And they won't be uh, <laughs> for a while. So my darkest edge is actually over here in the corner and then kind of down the back side. And then there's a lot of grays in between, so I'm just going to kind of... And this is muddy and messy and nowhere near what I need it to be. So that's kind of what I mean. It's, it gets pretty... As you're building up these foundational layers, it gets pretty uh, messy and blurry before we get anywhere near where we need to be. And that's all right. And I'm going to get in my core shadow. All right. So that's general. And now it's really blurry and I need to go, okay, we can make that way more crisp and clear. And get rid of some of these outlines. Um, when you're all done, you shouldn't have any outlines and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail here. I think that that's maybe the hardest part about this drawing is making sure that you don't have outlines when you're all done. 3D forms don't have black lines. So you guys don't have a black line like a cartoon around the outside edge of you. Okay, so 3D realistic forms don't have black or white lines all the way around them. So keep that in mind as you're working. Um, I'm going to use the pencils here to crisp up this edge. And this is what I mean. If all you do is draw in that line, that's not going to be good enough. It's actually a really bad example. It's not really showing up on the um, screen as well. I'll come back. There we go. You can kind of see it there. You can see like a thicker black line, or I'm sorry, white line. You don't want to have this outline. <coughs> That would be an outline, whether it's black or white. If you see where that white stops and the next value starts, it's a line. So you want to make sure that you take the time. If you're using the pencils for the edges, that doesn't mean outline it. It means use the pencils to get a specific edge and make sure it blends into the correct value at that edge. So I would need to work this around You guys are doing a really good job listening. I know this is kind of long. Um, and then I'm going to 
piece of black as well. Now here's one of the tricky parts. Again, that's an outline on the right. I need to make sure that I blend that in. The tricky thing right now is that that's not a gray. The edge of the cylinder right there isn't black, it's gray. So you might have to use the pencils together to get to the right um, value. And that's all right, that's expected. We're getting closer. Sort of my, my last step is usually um, using that eraser to get the edges uh, real clean. And you know, save yourself the time of using your um, finger to smooth it out. That should be the last thing you do because it's really easy to just smear something and wreck it. So be careful with that. Save that to less. Like right now. And then you need to be careful even as you're going from one section to the next so that you're not smearing that chalk anywhere you don't want it. Like I just did. It's getting a little crisper. Um, I need to add another highlight over here. And then I can take my eraser and get rid of all those extra lines and make it a little bit crisper. Remember when your eraser is dirty, I'll zoom out here. When your eraser is dirty and full, you just need to kind of bend it and fold it. And again, this is one of those things where, yeah, I do expect you to take the time to do this and make them as neat and clean as you can, because this is the most basic form you will be doing. Everything from here on out will get significantly more difficult. And this is the, this is the area you want to be working on it. You don't want to be, you don't want to be practicing on your actual final drawing. So practice this stuff now. We're getting a little more specific. It might take a while, but it's all right. So again, even though on the paper they shade in that gray right there, it's just so you can see the edge of the cylinder. You don't need to do that on yours because your paper is already gray. This isn't my best cylinder. But that's good enough for you to get started. Um, 